crashes will happen. And it will take however long you have been working and just flush it down the digital toilet. You see all these other alec heads here, here, here. These are going to be uh, ghost images to indicate that Thalestris has spun him around. Of course, she's concentrating on not getting killed. Always a good thing. But as she concentrates on not getting killed, she is actually going to kill him. Sad but true. That's why I called him Collateral Damage Boy in the previous video. Or Collateral Damage Man, just to be nice. So, I have solved the recording audio problem, but I'm sorry I don't have any fancy little background music to go in when I run out of things to say. So, I I suppose I could hum, but I don't think really anybody wants to hear that. Saving again. going to create another layer to do his um, multiple exposure heads. So I'm going to lock that layer, take him down, name this Alec Multi As you can see, my inking is what I would, well, what I shall describe as free form. And by that I mean I'm not limiting myself to the, in this case, the green sketch that I have on the layer beneath. I have drawn people long enough for a wide variety of purposes. Advertising, illustration, 
advertising illustration, editorial illustration, lots and lots of caricatures, portrait work that I don't feel any longer than I absolutely have to sketch out every detail of a face that I'm drawing in this situation. Perhaps when it's a single illustration, single image, or a portrait, something like that, yes, you need to get as much information in this sketch as you can or you feel you need. Actually, in my portrait work, I'm moving more towards growing the portrait in an organic fashion, sculpting it out of the canvas more than anything else, but then you're not here to hear me yammer around about how I do or don't do a portrait since I'm not doing a portrait right now. I'm doing a comic book page. Now that was an interesting thing that a painter does sometimes. I try to point it out next time it actually happens that uh, it will leave an image of the cursor on the screen as if the cursor was still there. It's not. It wasn't. That eraser cursor, the large circle. There it is. You see there? I'm assuming that's just some kind of after image on the screen. It's not really burned into the screen, but it's irritating. So I will, when I find it irritating me, I'll go in there and whip it out either with an eraser or draw over it enough to make it go away. Before I created this layer and started inking again, I enlarged the capture field for this video, so I was afraid it might be getting a little too stomach wrenching for you. And if this was a call-in show, I'd say let me know, but it's not, so by the time you see it, it'll be way too late to do anything about it. This speed pad is just wonderful to make quick changes in the size. See those little circles? Bug the crap out of me sometime. Um, the speed pad, yes. I learned about that by an interview in Airbrush Action with Mark Fredrickson, big time airbrush artist, now maybe, probably, totally digital artist. Does most of the covers for Mad Magazine these days. Big time advertising artist. He was in the last, well, ten years ago. But uh, he was making the move from airbrush, conventional airbrush to digital. And Airbrush Action Magazine interviewed him. He said he had one of these very same speed pads, and I read it, read that interview, came home, and immediately ordered one. 